Well, the Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Investment, Arlene Foster, is with us. Thank you for joining us. Now, John Armstrong there of the Construction Employers Federation says that the banks have turned their backs on the industry. They're not lending to companies, they're not lending to people wanting to buy homes, and whatever they're saying, he says, they're not lending. Do you agree with them? Well, it certainly chimes with some of the stories that are brought to me by colleagues and indeed in my own constituency, but I think we have to put the whole bank lending into the context of what happened traditionally here in Northern Ireland. In the past, when businesses needed finances, they went to the banks. They didn't look elsewhere for it. And I think what we're saying now is there may be a need to look elsewhere for it, whether it's with business angels, whether it's through venture capital. There's a need to look outside the traditional routes that we used to look to. So you, you, you agree then that banks are no longer the, the first port of call for, for funding because they're not lending? Well, I think that there certainly are certain sectors that the banks are very worried about lending to, and the property sector is one. And that's obviously because of what has happened over this past uh, 18 months to two years. And I suppose we have to understand that given that banks are under pressure themselves, particularly from the coalition government who have now levied this huge uh, bank tax on them, they have to have capital liquidity in their bank. So there's two stories to this and uh, I think we have to try and understand the total story. Uh, uh, but within that, uh, you're pointing towards other potential sources. So your own uh, party MP, Ian Paisley, says that the Assembly is powerless on this issue. You can't do anything. You can't force the banks to lend and you're, you're almost admitting that by suggesting people should go elsewhere. Well, what I'm saying is we have uh, a treasure and Westminster have the control over the banks and we've seen that just this week. Uh, I only have the power, uh, I've said in the Assembly, of, of uh, trying to bring, a, a shining a light really into the banks and what they're doing over this past two years and really the power of embarrassment to some extent to try and say to them, look, you're telling us that you want to lend. People are telling us the opposite story at a grassroots level. Somewhere in between there must be the truth. Oh, and what about uh, an area where you do have more direct power and control? Talk about the priorities mm. uh, within your budget over the next uh, four years. Sure. Uh, some criticism from uh, the PwC report uh, in this past week, uh, particularly in relation to foreign direct investment and tourism. For instance, in foreign direct investment, which is Invest NI, trying mm. to get foreign companies to come in here, uh, they're going to have less money to spend, aren't they? Because they've had to commit so much money uh, up front because of changes in EU rules. They just, even if, if you do win this investment from other places, they won't be able to support it. Well, there's a couple of stories there. First of all, I think it's indicative of the success that Invest NI have had over this past two years. Our programme for government target were 6,500 jobs promoted. We're nearly at 7,500 jobs promoted during a recession. So I think that tells a very good story. And yes, therefore, they have commitments that are rolling forward into year one and to year two of the next budget process. That's a challenge for me. I have been uh, talking to the finance minister about how we can overcome that. And he has been very clear that no uh, significant uh, foreign direct investment will fail for want of funding because there is uh, in the system the industrial guarantee, which uh, guarantees that any significant investment will not fail because of lack of funding. But does that suggest, though, if you, if you are strapped for cash, if you like, that, that you should pursue more aggressively and more urgently the option of getting power over corporation tax? Well certainly we have been and uh, we had a meeting last week in relation to corporation tax but it's not just about corporation tax it's about other measures as well and I would strongly argue that we need to be looking at capital allowances, we need to be looking at uh, R&D tax credits and we need to be dealing with things such as the air passenger duty and fuel duty stabiliser which was promised to us uh, before the general election by the Conservative Party and I think very strongly that the haulage industry for example, would really welcome a fuel duty stabiliser in the budget coming okay. up in March. That, that, that's it. They're, they're piloting a scheme elsewhere uh, where uh, fuel duty here could be different to other parts of the UK. And passenger tax, are you suggesting that uh, uh, the passenger tax out of Northern Ireland, uh, for instance, the issue is, is the transatlantic flight, uh, should be reduced here specifically? Well, I think that we have a very uh, specific set of circumstances in Northern Ireland. And if you look at the way in which Dublin's dealing with the issue, uh, their passenger tax at present is 10 euros. They're dropping that down to three euros in the budget that's coming up and what's happening in Northern Ireland we're actually increasing the rate of air passenger t uh, and for, from a tourism point of view and from an international investment point of view we need to have people coming to Northern Ireland and the way to do that is with direct access into Belfast. What about tourism another big priority for your mm. department and yet your spend on tourism promotion uh, will go down something that the PWC uh, report queries and your spend on uh, capital investment in tourism for instance uh, by year three of your budget you'll have reduced your spending on capital investment and tourism by 97%. It's going from almost 22 million to 600,000 pounds. 97%. You might as well not bother. Well, I think you need to look at what we've been able to achieve over this past three to four years.
years. And if you look at the Titanic Signature Project, if you look at the Visitor Centre at the Giants Causeway, if you look at the amount of investment we've put into Londonderry and how we're going to be able to build on that coming up to the UK City of Culture, we are actually very fortunate because the capital spend has happened to date. Now it's our job to sell that to the visitors, particularly in GB, and to get them to come over to Northern Ireland and experience what I think will be a fabulous holiday for them if they come. Okay, uh, and one question uh, on uh, Quinn uh, Insurance mm. uh, in uh, your own area, so you know it well. Uh, the Irish Finance Minister, Brian Lenehan, has said he now can't proceed uh, with the takeover of that company before the election. More uncertainty there. Are you worried about the jobs? I am, and it's a hugely disappointing uh, message to hear that from Brian Lenehan. We had hoped that the administrator would have been able to declare the preferred bidder uh, in the very near future. That's uh, clearly not going to happen now, so we need to keep in very close contact with the Irish government to see if we can push him on that, because I very uh, firmly believe that we need certainty in and around the Quinn Insurance deal, and therefore that will give certainty to the rest of the group as well. Okay, Arlene Foster, many thanks indeed. Thank